Games are incredibly complex. They are made of different systems that all intertwine together to create something solid, something that can be played. And for you to become the best gameplay animator possible, learning to think systematically helps you a ton. So let's talk about it in this episode. All right, welcome to this video. I hope you guys had a good week. If this is your first time here, my name is Harvey Newman, and I like to make these videos for you guys to share my passion for game development and also animation. Uh, giving you guys a little peek of what goes on behind the scenes and everybody that wants to work in game development hopefully finds value in my content because it gives you a slight glimpse of what's behind the curtain. Now, thinking systematically or thinking about animation systems is something that a lot of gameplay animators don't expect because here's the procedure that normally happens when you want to become an animator in games. First, you normally look at film or VFX or your best games, your favorite games, and then you think, I want to be an animator. Next, what happens normally nine times out of 10 is that if you have a lot of passion for games and you find that games is where you want to be at, you want to be a games developer, it's easy for you to be like, games development, I love animation, I love, put them both together and you get a gameplay animator, right? When you first look at it, at a surface, you probably think that a gameplay animator only animates. And you probably wouldn't be wrong, but it's not certain all the time. It depends on the game studio. So when you learn animation, the 12 principles, and you become the best possible animator you can be, it is true that most studios, all studios, want you for your skills in animation. So if you are really good at hand key, if you are really good at cleaning mocap, if you're really good at doing first person animations, then the studios are gonna go after you because you're really good at those things. And then when you start working, they can teach you how to actually work on the engine, on the skill, or whatever you need to do. This is basically the very first part of the equation, right? Because most people think that they're actually going to only animate for the foreseeable future, while they actually work in games. Now, this is not necessarily true. Some studios at the very basic level only want you to actually sit there and animate and create animation clips and spit out animation clips so then somebody else can put it in game. And this is true and most likely this will probably be the very first best job that you can get so you can start easy in the games industry. But as games develop, as we actually get to know more about how to make games, you start realizing that animation and gameplay animation, the logic behind it, go together and are really intertwined and they are one of the same. Now, when you actually start your journey as an animator, you probably want to only animate, which makes sense. But what I wanted to tell you guys with this video is that learning about this other part, which is the animation systems behind your animations, helps you a ton. And the reason why is this. When you have, and I've worked in studios like this, when you actually animate, do any animation and give it to someone else to implement, their interpretation of your animation might be very different from your animation, right? They'll see a punch or they'll see a kick and they'll put it like slightly different in engine because the kick needs to be slightly faster or slightly slower because design told them that this was supposed to happen faster or slower, right? They don't go back to the animator and then tell them you need to make a kick faster, especially if it's a small tweak. If it's a big tweak, as in like the kick needs to be way faster, then sure, they go back to the animator and be like, can you make it much faster? But if it's something small, they might tweak it in engine. Now, when you see it in engine, most likely you'll see that your animations are slightly different from what you've done previously, and then most likely you're not going to be very happy because if you spend so much time working on your craft and your animation, you want it to kind of like read exactly as you intended in the engine. So this is where animation and gameplay kind of meets together. And this is why you need to learn about animation systems because if you actually kind of own animation and know exactly how to do that, that's sorted because you've learned it over the years. And now you're learning about animation systems. It means that when you start implementing it or when somebody else implements it and you can tweak it because you learn exactly where the buttons are, then you start to actually see the animation in game exactly as you intended, right? So this is not true for all studios, I repeat, because a lot of studios all only want you to animate and then give it to someone else and then they'll tweak it and they implement it and they'll design around it. But there's a lot of studios that are catching on on this idea that animators can animate, but can they can also do certain parts of the implementation. And even if they don't do the implementation, once it's been implemented as a first pass, it goes back to the animation department so they can tweak it to make sure that it looks really, really good, right? Now, all the examples that I've gave here, it's actually when you are working in the games industry. 
Now, what can you do if you're actually not working in the games industry and you want to know about animation systems or you want to learn more about it? So the very first thing that I would say is that as you animate and if you feel like you want to be a really good games developer, definitely watch videos on how to set up animation systems, right? The animation logic. If you search YouTube for any of that in Unreal, for example, it's going to be very easy. You're going to see blueprints. You're going to see people setting up simple animation logic that allows characters to walk and punch and run and all that stuff, right? Just looking at videos, you'll start understanding that actually the animations that you see in game, they are split into different parts, right? They are just made to look together, right? As you go through, you push buttons and all that, all that stuff. Now, if the animations are split in different parts and if they are meant to actually just look like they are seamless, then you can actually start building your showreel and you can start thinking about your animations in the same way as an engine does, right? Because if you do that, and if you showcase that in your showreel, that this animation goes first, this is an idle, this animation goes next, this is a combat scene or like an attack or animation, and then goes back to idle. Now you have three separate animations that you can string together and you can showcase in your showreel that these are three distinct animations that actually come together in your showreel. And what that shows to a future employer is that this animator is not only doing kick-ass animations, but they are also thinking about systems, meaning they are thinking about how this is gonna break down to add to game, right? If you do this, you're actually going to be a much more valuable animator to any studio because people will come to you for ideas on how to actually push their systems, their animation systems to be better, right? So thinking this way is the only way that you get to be a lead or a director in a, any studio. Because what a director or a lead does, especially if you actually join in right at the beginning of the project, is answering the question of like, how can we push our systems to be better than they were on the last game? Or if you're doing a brand new game, how can we push our systems to make sure that it's original, right? The animations feel unique, right? So this is basically what you have to actually think about. And then you have to break it down in a way that animations can fit a certain system. So then you can work with code, you can work with technical animation, to make it all happen, to put it all together in a way that actually is seamless and actually makes sense in game. So the earlier you are in your thinking and the earlier you think about animation systems and how each animation breaks down and how they implement implemented in game, the better you're going to be later on when you have a 10, 20 year career. Because analyzing animation, just like film, in games works really well. It's just you have to have a different mindset. In film, when you analyze an animation, you're looking at the timing and the spacing and the arcs and all these other things, right? The 12 principles of animation. When you're analyzing in game, you're looking for those things as well. But on top of that, you're looking about where does the animation break? Where does it stop? Where does it loop? How does it actually transition from state to state, right? Which state is the character in right now? How do they actually go from idle to attack? How do they go from idle to um, eating, I don't know, whatever you actually decide the state transitions they are, you need to look at it very carefully and analyze it so you can ingest it and learn from it. Now, a really good thing for you to do is instead of playing games and being active, playing games is actually watching gameplay on YouTube. That helps a ton because you're not actively playing the game means that you're not immersed in the experience, which means that you can actually stop, rewind, go forward, go backwards and start seeing the seams between the animations because in a game, everything happens incredibly quickly, right? If you actually don't pay attention to things, everything feels flowy if the game is really well made. But if you slow it down, you will start to see there are certain blends, there are certain transitions, right? That you can see that it goes from one state to another state, right? And then you can see how good or how bad the things have been. You yourself can learn from it and then once you actually become a gameplay animator, you can hopefully do a better job that the game did when you were analyzing it, right? So this is the power of thinking systematically, right? You actually have to break down your animation so you think about it from a game perspective instead of thinking about it from a film or VFX or TV perspective, like where you have cameras and storyboards and you can actually just make a beautiful shot with no interruptions because games is all about interrupting the action, right? Because of these animation systems. So the more you learn about them, the more you study them, the more you learn about it, that's great. Now, to finish this off, 
what I'm saying here is that you need to learn about animation systems, but you don't necessarily need to actually learn how to make them, right? You need to learn about them just to ingest the information, to know exactly where animations break and all that sort of things. But you don't necessarily need to actually learn Unreal or put things in Unreal because you can also give an illusion of building systems in Maya because it's just animations and it's just visuals, right? So if you feel like learning a reel and building systems yourself, then for sure do it because it's going to be awesome and having your short reel with unreal shots is gonna be even better. But if you just wanna focus on your animation, please do that, right? Animation is already difficult enough. If you actually start learning animation and then also start learning a reel and animation systems, you're basically splitting your brain into two and both these things require fully your attention all the time, right? So I would recommend, if, especially if you're in the beginning of your career as an animator, focus on animation because that's what they're going to hire you for, your animation skills, not your animation logic, right? So focus on animation, become the best animator possible, but on the background, learn a little bit about how it is to implement animation, learn about animation systems, learn about transitional uh, animations, learn about how to actually make a good idol, things that actually are yeah, super beneficial. So when you sit on that chair, when you get your first day on a games developer studio, then you know exactly what you need to do. And then you can shine, you can actually give ideas and you can actually think about certain um, situations in game and break them down to the point that even developers, even designers, technical animators can understand exactly how things string together, right? So that's where you wanna be. So that is thinking systematically. Definitely something, another tool in your belt that I really recommend you guys have it. Now, Thanks very much to my Patreons, everybody supporting me on a monthly basis. If you don't know about my Patreon, definitely check it out. And if this video was of use to you and you enjoyed it and you took some information from it, then consider for sure subscribing, hit the like button and drop a comment below about thinking systematically. What, is, what does it mean to you? Do you understand it? Is it complicated? Most times, nine times out of 10, when I tell this to people, they get really confused. So if you're confused, drop a comment below. I'll be more than happy to actually answer your questions. As always, have a great rest of the week. Enjoy yourselves and until next week, stay well, stay safe. Peace.